Good evening, viewers. Once again, we are so glad to join with you. Of course, this is the program, Church of Nazarene <clears throat> Family Forum, and uh, we are with you every Sunday on CBC TV 8 at 5 o'clock. And we thank you for tuning in, those of you who have been sharing how you have benefited. Uh, I trust that you invite a friend to share with us today. Perhaps parents in particular, we are graced with the presence of a parent who will share with us her experience. Um, and that parent is Mrs. Judy Clark. Julie Clark um, was a management professional before, but now she is an educator dealing with children. And uh, um, Mrs. Clark, we welcome you. Thank you. We're so glad to have you to share with us this evening. Good to be here. Uh, Mrs. Clark is a mother of three and, of course, married for over 18 years. And uh, also, she loves the Lord. And um, you know, that's, that's an important area in her life as well. And, uh, of course, usually I have my co-host, Reverend Gellman. Very, very pleasant to be to you. How are you, sir? I'm doing well. You're doing well? Yeah, man. And how's the wife? We're doing, we're doing we're great. Doing. The family, family, the family. <laughs> the family is fine. Of course, of course, I mean, um, we're, we're, we're challenged by all that's happening around. Yes. How's the dust treating um, you? In terms of the, the ash and, yes, and, and, so on. and all the restrictions. But you're, not, we're, you're not complaining? No, no, we're, we're pulling through. Yeah. Yeah. Viewers, I, I trust that you're coping with the dust over there. But we, we trust that um, even as we share this evening, we will give some information of help, especially to those parents who have special needs um, children. Let us pray. Father, we thank you again for this facility that we can share with the viewing public on a special area of, important area of parenting the special needs child. And uh, we pray for those parents, again, over there who have children with special needs and the challenges that they may have. Pray for the given the skills, um, the support systems, and uh, we pray also that the courage and strength and the perseverance that is needed because we know that these children are beautiful as all children are and made in the image, in your image. And uh, we want, recognize they may have challenges, but ones that are surmountable with the right kind of guidance. So I pray God you will bless us this evening as we will share on this topic parenting, special needs, child. We give you thanks, Lord, for Christ's sake. Amen. Amen. Well, viewers, we'll be back with you in a moment. As I said, call a friend if you know anyone who has a special needs child. Call them up. Ask them to join and share with us. I'm sure something said this evening will have benefit to them. Back with you in a moment. The Church of the Nazarene Family Forum, shaping our society for the future by enhancing our homes and securing our destiny. Come join us every Sunday at 5 p.m. on CBC TV 8 as we turn the spotlight on an aspect of family life of critical importance to us. Tune in and be blessed. Thanks for joining us in this very special program on uh, looking at how we parent our special needs children and as well, far as you said, we have uh, Mrs. Julie Clark to share with us. And um, I was really looking forward to this program, um, Julie, because having, having taught for, for, for a few years at the now defunct Amapar School, uh, I always saw uh, parent interaction as being a significant part of the whole growth and development and, 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 and support um, of, of children. And, and parent education was, for me, one of the pinnacles, or well, sorry, one of the pillars upon which I, I built my, my guest counseling practice then. And so I was really looking forward to hearing from you as to how you were able to navigate that maze in terms of the discovery of a special needs child. So Julie, over to you. Thank you. So first of all, I had to reshape my mindset. <laughs> so 
you know, it's not a child with special needs, but I think of it as a child with superpowers. <laughs> <laughs> and, and it took a while for me to get there, you know what I mean? I like that. So when you first get your diagnosis, you are shocked, mm -hmm. you are overwhelmed, mm -hmm. you can't believe that this is happening to you, you are numb, mm -hmm. you feel disconnected, and you retreat because now you feel like if it is your fault, fault, what did I do to deserve this? God, why are you doing this to me? Why me? And so you go through that process and it's not something that takes a day, a week, you know, it takes time. Um, and you also, you know, you talk about grieving. You go through a grieving process as well, mm -hmm. right? Um, because, you know, there's a fear of the unknown. You don't know anything about this this you don't know what's going on you know you hear these terms out there but you never thought it would be you and you cry you grieve you think to yourself oh my gosh what will this child not be able to do yes. and then you think to yourself you know i have to reframe this and i have to say what can this child do you know Mm -hmm. um, because if you don't do that, if you don't pull yourself out of that, then you just spiral and spiral down and then you can become depressed. depressed. And I feel like even at one point, I might have felt that depression. Mm -hmm. um, you cannot dwell in that place. You definitely cannot dwell in it. So, your expectations have to change. You know, when you get a child and you look at your baby, you're like, oh my gosh, you know, he's so sweet. He's going to grow up to be this or he's going to grow up to be that. And then in this moment, you're saying all of those things are just evaporating before your eyes because you don't know. And you hear people talking about the things that they can't do. You go into stores with your child and people are not very understanding. They see the child perhaps maybe having a tantrum and they think, oh, he's so unmarried. Yeah, what's he doing? What's he doing? Trying to get he a slap though. He can't be here. You know, those are things that you hear simply because people don't understand. Now, when you see that child, there's just one glimpse in that very moment, but it's not what a parent has to go through 24 hours a day. And we literally go through it 24 hours a day because if the child is not going, 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 and you're not going, going, taking to appointments, doing the next thing and third, you in your quiet moments, you are worrying. You are worrying about what is going to happen to this child. You are worrying if something happens to me, the person who's advocating for this child, what will happen? Mm -hmm. Because, you know, if you have your parents around, your parents are not going to be there when the child grows up. Mm -hmm. You know, you, you, you have friends, but sometimes, I mean, friends are well-meaning, but sometimes they really don't understand what you're going through. Mm -hmm. You never understand until you walk in those shoes, and that is the reality of the situation. Mm -hmm. And... Then you start to think, like, do I want this label on my child? You know, like, if I put this label, then people will think that he can't. And so I really don't like the labels. I think, like, even up to now, I haven't even spoken to my son about what his challenges are. <laughs> I haven't given them a label. So if you ask him what his thing, you know, he would probably, he can't tell you because I have never given him a label. What I have tried to do is try to encourage him to be what he can be, mm -hmm. when he can be, mm -hmm. because it doesn't happen in my time either. Mm -hmm. Maturity takes place at different intervals, That's right. right? So you just have to work with it. But after you've been in that place where you're grieving and you, you feel sorry for yourself and you, you kind of you get angry, you know, because mm -hmm. you do feel anger mm -hmm. and you lash out. And sometimes the pressure is so much that you even when you lash out at your partner you lash out at whomever <laughs> not intending to do it but you, like you have no control over it and and so you know you have to find a plan you have to make a plan and you have to make it quickly right um because you have to you have to change what the question you have to change the question you're asking yourself mm -hmm. And that is the honest truth. You, you can't ask, why is this happening to me? But you're going to ask, how are we going to move from here? Mm -hmm. And there's a, there's a process, because this is a lesson in process and progress mm -hmm. at the same time. So you, as a parent, you're going through a process. Mm -hmm. And the process is difficult. Sometimes you feel like you're so alone. 
and that is the reality of the situation. Mm -hmm. You know, um, you feel like you're alone. Your plan is to find the help that's needed. So after you, you know, okay, well, this is what they're saying, you know, would be your child's superpower. And they're saying, well, you know, these are the things that you need to do to help him along. You have to plan. They may be, you, may, you may not be able to do everything at one time, mm -hmm. but you know you need to also have good relationships with your doctors and your therapists and whoever, even your educators. And you need to have a reality check, I like to say, because we can't live in a fantasy world. <laughs> it is what it is, you know, it is what it is. And we have to recognize that we are not super people. Yeah, I'm not superwoman. I can't do everything all the time every time mm -hmm. and I think that sometimes we as parents we put that pressure on ourselves like we have to be here for everybody we have to be here for the challenge and, and the child with superpowers becomes the center of our universe and that can be dangerous because well especially for me I have other children you know I have two other children and I have a husband, <laughs> and I have a husband. <laughs> yes and I have a husband <laughs> and I have a husband yes <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> mm -hmm. so you know, it's very important that you remember that you have other responsibilities as well. Mm -hmm. Now, in terms of support groups, I'm really I'm not a member of a support group, mm -hmm. right? But I know parents that have children who mm -hmm. have superpowers, mm -hmm. and it's always good to connect with them mm -hmm. because you give them that. Sometimes you need to talk. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you you just want to cry. Sometimes you, you have horrible days. I mean, anybody has a bad day, but sometimes your day severely goes to the left mm -hmm. and it feels like if everything is just falling in on you. And uh, sometimes you need, and, and that person might just call you at that time mm -hmm. and you have a conversation, you have a good laugh, and then mm -hmm. you feel better and you feel energized. And I will say also too, at this point, sometimes you just have to bow your head and pray. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the other thing about prayer is sometimes you find it difficult to pray. Mm -hmm. Very, very difficult. I'm not going to lie to you. There have been times when I know I have to pray. I have to. I just can't for whatever reason. And then there are other times when you just can't find the words. Mm -hmm. And there are times when I just have to say, help me. That's all I can say. That's all I can say to God. Help me. That's all I can get out, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. um, because of how overwhelmed. Mm -hmm. Now you have you have to find support. So I said all this now to say that you have to find support. So it's not only maybe that parent that has a ch another child that's a superpower, but also support um, in terms of being able to have little nuggets of time for yourself. Mm -hmm. And I have been blessed because I have great friends. I mean, my friends are so great that once a year, I can ask one of them to just hold my children, even mm -hmm. if it's just for a week, mm -hmm. and give me that time mm -hmm. to breathe. Mm -hmm. and, and they don't know how much I appreciate that. That's important. Because if I don't get that, I cannot function. You're crazy, man. Yeah. yeah. And, and, and because you're constantly planning the next move. Yeah. It's like, it's a chess board, and you're just trying to keep two paces ahead because if something happens at the moment and you're not prepared everything could just collapse mm -hmm. you know so mm -hmm. you you have to be constantly planning and you have to as i said you have to find those nuggets of time in all of this though you also have to find time where you can educate yourself because you could go to as many people as you want and they could tell you as many things as they want. But if you don't understand what this really means or what the implications are for you, then that's going to be an issue, mm -hmm. right? Um, for me, I, as, as y'all would have mentioned, you know, I was in management before. But then, you know, my child was growing up and he was going to school and I was like, oh my gosh, what are they doing, you know? So then I then started to look for avenues to 
understand like what was happening in the classroom and like, how can I make the process better and I always would form relationships with the teachers and even the principals of the school where I would have to sit and plan okay these are the goals for this year this is what we're trying to achieve because it's a partnership you are not in this alone you often feel that you are but you are not alone it's a partnership it's a partnership between you your doctors your therapists the teachers every is a partnership that's the only way that we will give them a, a good grounding right um so and you also have to provide opportunities for them to develop skills apart from being under you all the time you understand so you have to involve them in extracurricular activities and don't be afraid to tell the people what is going on you know any time that i go to in, to include him in something i always speak to the coach or whoever's in charge you know this is what it is. Right. These are the issues. This, yeah. Do, Julie, can, can I just punch a little question sure. in here? Uh, mm -hmm. Sorry for, for, for preventing from, from your, your flight. You know, but <laughs> mm -hmm. but um, I, I was wondering, though, if that, that issue of partnership is something that, that is structured into the, the schools or that was a, a personal and deliberate uh, decision that you made? It was a personal and deliberate decision I made okay. because and with all my children, I always make sure that I have good relationships with the teachers because they spend most of the time school. at school. Make it, make it always, yeah, yeah, so it was it was just an extension of that. It was a personal and deliberate relationship because at the end of the day, you are advocating for your child. You can't sit back and expect everything to fall into your lap. Mm -hmm. You have to get up there and you have to get things going, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. um, and then you have that open relationship you know, communication really works. Yes. You know, when you have that openness um, with the teachers, you mm. know, and they can say to you, well, today, you know, it didn't go so well because X, Y, Z, and you're thinking, oh my goodness, this is another issue now. Mm -hmm. And so you're thinking, okay, so now that the teacher has brought that to my attention, maybe I need to speak to the therapist or the doctor and say, well, this is what we're experiencing now. Perhaps, you know, we maybe need to shift our focus because mm -hmm. that's what it is. We can't set objectives and stick you know, as they say, this is a fluid situation. <laughs> so it, it, it's not set in stone, you know? So we have, you know, and the plan is multifunctional on many different levels. And because you also find that children like these have like issues with self-esteem and self-confidence and self-worth and, you know, and you have to then find what their strengths are. Mm -hmm. And you have to put things in place to help them to feel better mm -hmm. about themselves mm -hmm. and their journey. And believe me, me, having a child with special powers is an, is an unexpected journey. Mm -hmm. Nobody ever goes in thinking right. that they will have that. That's right. You know, so it's unexpected. Right. It is unexpected. And the struggle is very real. Yeah. It is it's very real. Mm -hmm. and, um, and you struggle with different aspects too. You know, so mm -hmm. it's just not maybe it may be getting all the help you need it may be a struggle with time you know so there are things that you have to build into your day even to make sure that you also get a little breathing space for me one of the things that i used to do was make sure i'm very very strict about bedtime mm -hmm. so by eight well when they got a little older it was eight <laughs> but before it was seven mm -hmm. so by seven you know they are in bed and i'm just breathing Mm -hmm. And if that means me just sitting down on the couch and letting the TV watch me, <laughs> then that is what I did, mm -hmm. you know? And I needed um, to breathe. Could, could, could I ask a question about cost? What uh, about cost? In terms <laughs> of um, to raise a, a, a child with special powers, uh, to use your language. Uh, it's catching, <laughs> right? Um, did you find it to be very, co very costly in consultation with doctors and it is, It is costly. Yeah. It is costly. It is, it is costly. Um, especially if you decide to go the private route. Because remember, you're still paying the therapist. Right. You're paying for the consultations. You're paying for all the activities that you want to involve them in because you want to to have it, let people understand that they need to be an inclusive and That's inclusive right. Right. environment. That's right. And you know, and the thing is, the reality of the situation is too that you fight in all areas. You fight for him at school. Mm -hmm. You fight, you even fight sometimes in the church, because mm -hmm. sometimes we don't even understand. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. so you have to fight. And the other thing that I want, if you, you know, you have to be proud of your children, though. Mm -hmm. So you can't let the superpower 
make you not proud mm -hmm. you know so you have to to really trust and make sure that you make the right choices and sometimes you make mistakes so let me just say that up front because <laughs> i am not perfect and nobody is and there are sometimes when you make mistakes and you have to be able to learn from those mistakes recognize first that you've made the mistake you know mm -hmm. give a little think and you try to learn from whatever that mistake is okay yeah yeah thank you for sharing i yes. know and you can share even much more yes. uh viewers we'll be back with you in a moment as we continue our talk with um, Julie, as she zeroes in on her own uh, experience raising a child with special needs. The Church of the Nazarene Family Forum, shaping our society for the future by enhancing our homes and securing our destiny. Come join us every Sunday at 5 p.m. on CBC TV 8 as we turn the spotlight on an aspect of family life of critical importance to us. Tune in and be blessed. Back with you. Um, we want to continue our discourse with Julie. But before, I just want to read a verse from Galatians chapter 6, um, verse 9, that says, Let us not become weary in doing good, for at a proper time we will reap a harvest if we do not give up. I know as she shares, you can imagine that Raising a special needs child can be, can, can wear you down. But I want to encourage you, um, Julie. I know your son is about how old you now? 13. 13. Yeah. And uh, those that are also listening may have children of varying ages and you may get a bit weary. But I just want to encourage you. Ultimately, you will see the results and the rewards will come. Um, but, Julie, I just want to uh, briefly ask you. A question you you, you do have uh, have a children as well mm -hmm. um, how do you navigate with them you, you constantly would talk to them or sit them down and have a you know I, I suppose sometimes you can learn on the spot but yes. you that's in, that's in brief yeah in brief initially mm -hmm. um, because he has an older sister and a younger sister. Right. So with the older sister, I would have spoken to her when he was, you know, probably mm -hmm. a toddler coming up. Yeah. And I explained to her, you know, he's not always going to think like you do because yes. his brain works differently. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, you just have to understand that. Mm -hmm. And I mean, sometimes you might feel like yelling out, that's fine. Mm -hmm. But just remember that anything that you say has to be out of love. Mm -hmm. Yes. Right? So, and I did it with the younger sister as well, when she was old enough to understand. Mm -hmm. He's always saying that she is so bossy and wants to boss him around, but he <laughs> is older and she has to do what he says, you know? So... <laughs> okay, so, so you think they understand the concept. I like what well, you say, when you say what they say has to be out of love. Yes. That and governs, and you think they got the picture more or less? More or, or less, but what my daughter said to me the other day, you know, mommy, you really didn't prepare us, you know. You did not prepare us for how mean That's people are. That's your younger daughter or your older? The older daughter. She said oh, you did not prepare us for how, say about how mean people are and how they don't even take the time to get to know him before yeah. they judge him. Yeah, that's right. Right? So, so they are his advocates. They represent him. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm sure yeah, you have a question but, about but, that. But, but more than that, though, um, I think you mentioned it earlier, the ability to boost his self-esteem. Yeah. Because, I mean, well, his iPhone and working with special needs, uh, it's like the children can, can at times feel very were rejected, you know, by society, and, and there's some there's some persons who themselves, for me, uh, they bring a challenge too because they, they sell these children, mm -hmm. you know, on the bus and stuff, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, um, and so so how how do you do that though, uh, to keep him keep his, his spirits up in that sense? Well, it's not always easy, and I can say this also too, like it's not a bed of roses because sometimes you get angry, and you have to yell, and mm -hmm. you have to you know right. you have to discipline him and everything. Mm -hmm. But then you look for little things that he can excel in. Mm -hmm. So, you know, like right, right now he's involved in martial arts and he had a test and he passed and he's, you know. So the little things outside of academics, yeah, right. you know, you get him to, right. you know, to perform. And once he likes it, he does it. Mm -hmm. So, you know, he likes things like football and stuff like that. So, 
you look for other little things. Even when you play board games, he likes to win. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So he is competitive. Yeah. And sometimes he does, I mean, literally, does he, he does <laughs> win. Yes. Yes. And you're like, what? How did he do that? You know what I mean? It's a celebration. Yes, I mean, like, oh. he's not just allowed to win, yeah. but he has to play yes. to win. Totally yes, he has to play to win. What about, what about how, yes. how does he interact with daddy? Well, I don't know. I don't know how y'all. <laughs> I don't know how men do this thing, but you know, we women are more like the coddlers, and we would, yeah. you know, make sure this, yeah. make sure that. And you know, if a child is playing, we're like, oh gosh, you know, we have to pay for proof of everything, yeah. and you know, and daddy just lets him play, you know, okay, well yeah. he'll fall, and that's yeah. it, you, you know, and you get back up. Yeah. So I find like, that's yeah, I, I yeah. find now that in, in this season yes. where he's at. I find the relationship is different mm-hmm. because just like any other child, you know, when they get a certain age, your tone has to change yeah. and the way you reason yeah. with them has to change. Mm-hmm. So now this is a process they're going through. I just, I just stay out of yes. it. Yes. <laughs> just, and that, that's important. Though. Emerging. Yes, yes, it's yes. emerging, you know, so yes. I mean, now whatever they're happens, finding their... Whatever happens, <laughs> there has to be um, an understanding between mommy and daddy Zoe in terms of right. discipline. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Because even as he grows and develops, um, that's going to impact how mm-hmm. how you engage him as well. Yes. You know, in terms of, of the father father son connection. But we'll ask the question though, because I, I really um, treasure your forthrightness and your ability to uh, to speak very very uh, very clearly about your own journey. And uh, and so the question is, what what's next for 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 Julie? Uh, I think that you have such information. It needs to be somehow transmitted in some, in some way um, to other person because I mean I, I know the difficulty yes. of parents and, and, and being able to admit the special needs yes. um, children so uh, what, what's next for Julie? What's next for Julie? I don't know if it's going to happen next week, next month, next year but you know I did I'm thinking very hard about starting a foundation and um, this foundation will be an avenue for parents to come in and just share and get information mm-hmm. and help mm-hmm. and you know hopefully if they want to bring the children and just leave them for an hour or two that they can breathe okay i want to be able to facilitate that because not everybody has that support because yeah. there are single parents out there mm-hmm. and we have to be real there are single parents that don't have mm-hmm. um grandparents and aunts and, and relatives, and relatives and to and help so or, or that will help yeah. they might have them but they're they're just hands off you know mm-hmm. so if i can provide a space where that can happen, that'd be yeah. great. But that's noble. Yes. That's noble. We all remember that. You said it here on <laughs> Family Forum. No, that's, that's just noble. Also, quite necessary as well, too, because yeah. I mean, I do concur with what you said in terms of mm-hmm. single parents who need that kind of support. support. Yes. They'll be concur. giving a chance to give the one final comment and then we'll say pray. We just have a few minutes to, two minutes, one minute or so to go. Well, one minute. okay, one minute. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> it's a lot, but mm-hmm. always remember that. You have to just keep up with whatever appointments you have. Mm -hmm. You have to keep moving. You have to keep improving. You will fall. Trust me, you will. (laughs) You will fail. Trust me, you will. Mm -hmm. But failure is really a lesson Mm -hmm. in how to get up and get back on that horse, you know? Um, Don't be afraid to take advice from other people because you don't know it all. You don't have it all covered. You know, you are not special in every area. Mm -hmm. So don't be afraid to take advice. Um, Learn that you don't have to be governed by what other people think also mm-hmm. you know mm-hmm. you don't definitely you don't and you have to understand that no matter how bad you feel or how bad you feel the situation is there's always hope yeah. and it will always change mm-hmm. it won't stay the same mm-hmm. forever yeah. you know that, what i mean well, that's a good note to end yes on. there's always hope <laughs> there's, always, there's hope. always hope yes yes well I, I want to thank you, uh, Julie, for sharing with us. You've been passionate. You've shared from your heart. Uh, we pray God's blessings on you and, uh, and indeed, your, your children in general. Thank you. And uh, I, I, I know, as Robin Kelman said, you will find a forum to share, share your experience. Yes. This is when to have a closing prayer, I understand. Okay. Almighty God, uh, we pause to first give you thanks for for Julie and for her experiences and for her ability to share so openly and so candidly. We pray, God, that your every blessing will rest upon her. We pray, Father, for the wider context, those who are working through 
and we're at different stages of the acknowledgement of their child's special need. Uh, I pray God you will grant to them the hope and the faith and the desire to continue to, to point to those children, but more so, Father, to give them the kind of context where they can reach their full potential. Almighty God, we pray today for your continued blessings and direction. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you again, Julie. Thank You're you most so welcome. Much. Well, viewers, thank you. thank you for listening. God bless you.